You're going to be worthless? As we know them today. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> Jenna Pilgrim, co-founder of Streambed Media. I'm, I'll, I'll tell you um, a little bit more about why she said that. She said probably the top two, two to five percent of NFTs are, are going to kind of make it past the hype that cycle that we're seeing now. And a lot of these projects are going to die out and we're going to see that oh, yeah. more utility come to NFTs. So how do you respond I mean, to that? Yeah, I mean, it's the same with startups, right? Like only like 95% or sorry, 5% of startups like really actually make it. Um, you know, money is, you know, we've reinvented money and money wants to find new ways to create community, create connection, create meaning for people in the NFT space. I mean, NFTs are going to be, you know, more than just digital art, digital communities, digital access. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it's true, you know, like maybe 5% of them will make it, but this is, you know, this is all part of the experiment, right? We have to, life itself needs to discover like what sticks with people, what communities, how people can best identify with this new relationship that we can have with money. Um, so yeah, I mean, she's not wrong, but it's definitely, they're not all going to be worthless. Um, they're going to, it's going to reinvent, it's going to touch every single company that we see in the next 10, 20 years. Was your, uh, is it your co-founder or your... She's my co-founder. Yeah. Was it because NFTs aren't actually on the blockchain, like the, the images aren't being hosted on the blockchain? I think that's one issue that we can unpack now. I think a lot of people don't really understand, especially the people who are just getting into NFTs now, what they're actually owning when they get an NFT. And so, Maddie, maybe you can talk us through that. You know, what would you say to people who are getting into NFTs now? Yeah, like people have this... this uh, belief that NFTs are like on this immutable blockchain, but if you're using a centralized service like OpenSea, they have the capacity to remove the image file that they're hosting on their own servers, and you can still own the token, but the visual representation of that token disappears from the face of the internet. And so imagine, if you will, like a, a dire situation where a web server goes down, the NFTs host on that web server theoretically disappear unless they're written into code on the blockchain. So maybe your co-founder was alluding to this fact that like we're not as decentralized nor as immutable in the current instantiation of NFTs as we're being led to believe. And do you think we'll achieve that decentralization anytime soon in the NFT space? As we get more and more mainstream, I feel like we're seeing more centralization. Yeah, I, I don't think we are going to go all the way decentralized in NFTs. But NFTs do provide tremendous amounts of utility, and they also create a bridge between digital and physical worlds that is a true paradigm shift. So I'm really bullish on the technology. I'm not so bullish on like the centralized marketplaces uh, controlling whether or not your NFT can be seen in your wallet, and um, the this idea that like uh, most of these things are being flipped and are cash grabs. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be honestly very shocking when we see one of the, let's say a very popular NFT collection that 404s, right? Mm -hmm. Then people are gonna really wake up and be like, oh crap! Like, uh, what's going on here? Like, is this actually decentralized? Because I feel at some point one of these big pro like a big project, all their stuff's gonna get unpinned. It's just gonna go offline. Their images are gonna not be found. And to Maddie's point, I mean, it's just. At that point, there'll be more of a need for it, but a lot of that infrastructure is being built right now from you know, Arweave is being more like a permanent storage solution. There's a lot of amazing technology that's being built on Arweave. Um, Coin Network specifically is doing some really cool stuff with making NFTs um, incredibly energy efficient across these different blockchains utilizing Arweave's perma storage network. Um, so I think you know, what, what comes out of the Arweave ecosystem is we're gonna, when we see more and more NFTs coming out of there, which is going to be starting more so now and, and, and going into the future, we're going to start seeing a l much more decentralized solutions that are incredibly energy efficient, incredibly fast, and, and, and even cheaper than using traditional centralized services. Silly idea for a DAO, and then I'm going to let you get to your thing. Uh, Noah's Ark DAO, where we save all the animal profile pictures. I love it. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> yes. I would add on to this too, anybody getting into NFTs, a big thing we say is DYOR. So do your own research, look into these projects. So these NFT collections are similar to how companies work and your NFT is now stock. And that token could get you access to other utility that's being added by that company if it's a good project. So Bored Apes, you get to the yacht party. Alien Friends, they created that whole project to make friends. I bought in, I'm down to make friends. Like, 
they keep adding more utility to these projects. So that's what's keeping the price up and making, giving people reason to hold on to the NFTs and decrease the supply so that cost will go up. And the community, if you band together, then you have the ability to figure out what that floor price is.